Hey everybody, how are you today? This is Jim from The Pain PT. Thanks for attending today. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you're looking for individual consultation or wondering if your condition has a brain and nervous system component to it or cause to it, reach out to me. You can go to my website, thepainpt.com to book a consultation. I offer group coaching. And one other thing I want to mention is the people I work with, uh, I send out daily audios as well as reminders to people 10, 15 minutes a day to remind them of practices we want to be doing here for our recovery. And people find that very valuable. So saying that, we're going to talk today about the brain again and the, some current understanding and current concepts that have come from a study I'm going to share with you in a little more detail, 2024, about understanding the role of cortex in, the, in chronic pain. And when I say chronic pain, I'm not just going to have you think, well, I don't have chronic pain. I have something else. Remember, chronic pain is one condition amongst many different types of symptoms that represent very similar processes happening in the brain and nervous system. So you can substitute your chronic symptom for chronic pain. But this study has worked with chronic pain in particular, looking at how the brain works. And I want to share some recent data because they're proposing a new model here of understanding. I'll touch on some of the old models of understanding that do represent some of what's happening, but they're proposing a newer model to look at how this works in the brain and why people are having chronic pain. So the title of the study actually has in it, are people with chronic pain overthinking the meaning of their pain? I'm going to link this, this study in the, the notes here today. And so they're looking towards a real life understanding of these altered functional behavior of a couple networks in the brain. Again, are people with chronic pain overthinking the meaning of their pain? And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to jump all the way down in the study, right down to the bottom of it, right to the meat of the study. I'm not going to beat around the bush here and read you a paragraph from the study where they're reflecting on and thinking about, based on the neuroscience data, a proposed new model for understanding chronic pain. And it's in relation to, again, the cortical regions of your brain. I talk a lot about the medial prefrontal cortex. There's another area called the anterior singular cortex, what's called the anterior insular cortex, AIC, ACC, M, prefrontal cortex, PFC. Okay, you don't need to understand all the little details and names, but what you want to understand this is the cortical regions of your brain and the connect connectivity between these regions they've been studying with the neuroscience and brain MRI studies to see what's going on with people with chronic pain. And what they found here is that with people with chronic pain um, is that there's an increased functional connectivity between, again, this ACC and the AIC. And the AIC, entered insular cortex, is used or is known to be involved in the process of what's called interoception, it's the ability to tend to the signals in the body. Okay, so think of heartbeat, think of pain signals. Think of anything you feel in your body that's called interoception. And that, that part of the brain, the AAC, and its connection to the other cortical region, the prefrontal cortex and ACC, can be potentially affected. So here's what they say. The increased functional connectivity between the ACC and AIC, often observed in people with chronic pain, may thus possibly reflect a process by which negative overthinking about the meaning of pain for oneself and one's actions might increase the personal threat of a given context. Okay, so let's stop here and just absorb that for a minute. So negative overthinking, how many of you guys have that around your chronic pain or chronic symptom about the meaning of the pain, the meaning of the symptom for yourself and one's actions might increase the personal threat so that this becomes threatening or dangerous to you. We talk a lot about how chronic pain and chronic symptoms are considered a perceived threat, a perceived danger, meaning there is no threat or danger in the body 
there is no physical issues in the tissues, there is no damage, there is nothing broken in the body. So let me go on further and, and read to you what they say in the next sentence. And I'll read the whole thing to you again so you can absorb it. This may in turn increase the likelihood of harmless afferent signals from the body to be interpreted as potentially harmful, thereby increasing the susceptibility of experiencing pain in the absence of ongoing tissue damage. Okay, so again, what this means is that harmless, as Dr. Sarno, many of you know, talked about these, what he coined TMS, I call BS brain sensations, it being harmless. And again, in this study of actual neuroscience data, the researchers are proposing a model and theory that there's actually harmless signals coming from your body. Remember the AIC, anterior insular cortex, is responsible for interoception. It picks up those signals, it processes them, okay? They're being interpreted as, as potentially harmful by your brain. Okay, because of the meaning that you give to them and the threat value you give to this pain or symptom, thereby increasing the susceptibility of experiencing pain. So having this pain or having this symptom you're having in the absence of there being anything wrong in the body. So again, let this sink in, but this is real. This is something that I've been talking to you about for a while now on the channel. This is hot off the press research 2024. I'm gonna read it to you again, because I wanna to get to the meat and potatoes. All the little details of the neuroscience you don't need to understand, you'll get lost in the weeds, you'll get confused, but you wanted to get the take home message here that this new model here. Again, I'll read it to you one more time and just, just listen to this. Okay, that if our previously suggested role of the anterior cingular cortex and chronic pain processing holds true, Increased functional connectivity between these two cortical regions, again, the ACC, which is part of your prefrontal cortex, and the AIC, anterior insular cortex, think interoception, as off, is, is often observed, these two things as often observed in people with chronic pain, and may thus possibly reflect the process by which negative overthinking about the meaning of pain for oneself and one's actions might increase the personal threat of a given context. Okay, so how, how what we think about it what, it, what it means to us, and our actions might increase the threat now in the brain. The brain be, perceives it as being more threatening. This may in turn increase the likelihood of harmless, they put in quotation marks, Afferent signals, afferent meaning incoming signals from the body to the brain to be interpreted as potentially harmful, quotation marks, thereby increasing the susceptibility of experiencing pain in the absence of ongoing tissue damage. It's very important to understand that. So again, what they're saying very simply is that you could have high levels of pain because the brain is interpreting these harmless signals as harmful because of the meaning that we give them through the overthinking, making them into a threat in the brain. But the connection between these areas is altered and that's creating this pain. Not the body, there's nothing wrong in the body. I mentioned this before with chronic pain, a lot of chronic symptoms. There isn't anything actually wrong in the tissues in the body, it's in the brain networks, okay, that we're experiencing this. And in, in the conclusion here of this study, they talk again about this medial prefrontal cortex. And they went over a lot of the data around this here is that they suggest an updated model of what both the altered activity and in and functional connectivity to the medial prefrontal cortex may represent in people with chronic pain. We suggest, again, these are the neuroscience authors. We suggest that increased Medial prefrontal cortex activity may reflect the tendency to overthink the meaning of pain for oneself or one's actions. This may in turn increase the personal threat 
of a given context, and thereby increase the susceptibility to experience pain for other symptoms, which we suggest might be reflected by an increased functional connectivity between the prefrontal cortex and the AIC, anterior insular cortex, and again, the anterior cingular cortex is part of the prefrontal cortex. So I hope this makes sense, guys. I don't want to get too much into the weeds here on the details of it. I will just touch upon some of the other models that have been put forth, put forth previously because of this neuroscience data. And some of these other models that we understand here are related to the emotional processing of pain, okay, that we have um, uh, emotional regulation processes that the brain so emotional areas of the brain are more activated in people with chronic pain. We've seen some data that represent that and that the cortical regions of your brain are also engaged during the experience of emotions or expression of emotions. Okay. So they say here in the study that increased emotional processing of pain may serve to, as a partial explanation for the altered behavior of the prefrontal cortex, but does it provide a complete explanation and they're saying it, it doesn't, okay? It's one piece, which I agree with, emotional process, emotional piece. The second one is what they call aberrant appraisal threat in the context of pain. That we think of this as being, um, chronic pain might resemble a more misperception of pain that is potentially dangerous, even when reality is it's safe, okay? And that the people with chronic pain have an inability to turn off or deactivate the cortex when they're doing other things that grab their attention while experiencing pain. Because again, their brain is focusing on the pain as a primary threat. Okay, so that there's not a deactivation of the cortex. Cortex is always constantly turned on. And that leads to another piece of the model, which is increased internal attention to pain. It's the third explanatory model, is that it might reflect an increased internal attention to pain, which might disrupt the top-down pain modulating pathway, which calms pain down. So people who over-focus on pain, think of the word hypervigilance there, that that may be a pathway as to why people can still be experiencing pain because they're focusing on it intently, thinking of it as a threat and danger. Okay, so this updated model here so looked at, again, this actual, like I mentioned to you before about the overthinking and the overmeaning of the pain and it amplifying these connections in your brain to create a harmless thing or make a harmless sensation coming into the brain that's picked up by your AIC and blown up into something harmful because of the threat value we give it, the meaning we give it to this, to that symptom. Okay, and they mentioned a few other things here about how um, examples of thoughts in people with chronic pain that might be associated with this activation of the ACC, okay, which is within your prefrontal cortex. What if my pain never goes away? What if the pain becomes worse? Is it really good for me to exercise? What if I will not be able to work? What if, will I be able to take care of my children? What if this is the first sign of my body failing? Will I end up in a wheelchair? Again, this is some of the negative thinking they talk about here. So I hope this is helpful, everybody, to just understand this from a neuroscience perspective, that this is real data. This isn't something that I am actually telling you, and I want you to believe me. I want you to believe the, the data, okay? Believe the research that's come out. Again, this was put out just this year, 2024. And it continues to evolve our understanding of the brain and its relationship to chronic pain and chronic symptoms in your body. But this should hopefully let you know that this is real. These are some of the things we're thinking about and that this updated model seems to make sense, right? And many of you probably agree with this in terms of what they're finding. So let's all work to, to break this down. And a lot of the stuff you're gonna hear in my channel is working in a way to reduce the threat value of your symptom, that this isn't dangerous, this isn't threatening, and that the meaning of it to, to you should be decreased in terms of its threat. It's just your brain amplifying a lot of this stuff. Okay, so take from this what you can. Hopefully it's helpful. I like to weave in the research as you guys know. If you enjoyed the channel, again, give it a thumbs up. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Please pass the word around. This is still relatively new 
information. This isn't something that people have when they go to their doctors. It's not something people talk about. This is something that's emerging. Brain is the last frontier of medicine. Again, if you want a consultation with me or want to join my group coaching program, go to my website, thepainpd.com, and you can learn more there. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.